Hello out there to you. Let's learn about the business cycle. So put this into presentation mode here. All right. So if we were looking at the U.S. GDP from 2000 to 2018, remember the GDP is consumers spending, business spending, and government spending with a little bit of adjustment for trade. Uh, we see it starts out at $12 trillion because 1000 uh Billions is a, is a trillion, and then we get to uh, 17 and a half trillion. So that's tremendous growth in this uh, 20 year period. We do see two uh, spots here where we have negative growth. That one's 2007 to 2009, and then down here in, in 2001. Notice this one's worse than this one. Okay, so there's a difference there. Um, I'll skip all of that. Okay, so if I were to circle the good times, the good times is right here, good times is right here. Those are the periods of prosperity, we're going to call those prosperity, and then these gray bars here indicate U.S. recessions. Okay, Other countries have more frequent recessions. Now as I record this, the GDP had been growing all the way to the last quarter of 2019, and then uh, just before the pandemic hits, we start to enter a recession, and then the, the pandemic makes it much deeper. So we're currently in a recession as I record this. Uh, now, our goals of macroeconomic policy, we want long-term growth and we want stability. So we want a stable economy that we can make predictions about the future and we want it to be growing. So most of the time, the United States is above this zero. This is uh, by, by rate change or by uh, growth. So most of it's positive growth. That's good. Here are there are two periods of time. So that little tiny recession there, 2001, and that deep recession, 2007. Okay, so those are those are what we're after. Okay, now if uh, GDP increases, okay, what happens to unemployment? So if the spending is increasing, unemployment is going to fall, okay? Because more people spending means creation of jobs, companies are going to hire more people, okay? Uh, when GDP increases, what happens to inflation, which is the measure of the price level, and we're going to get some inflation, okay? How much is a, is a question to measure, but we're going to, we should see some inflation there. If unemployment goes up, what happens to GDP? Well, then GDP is going to decrease because some people are going to lose their jobs because of that they're the unemployed people. And then other people are going to see that and they're going to get a little spooked and say, hey, maybe I should cut down on my spending, not spend as much. What if I lose my job? Okay. Uh, and then finally, what about unemployment increases? What happens to inflation? Well, inflation is also going to decrease Okay, as people stop spending as much money there's going to be uh, downward pressure on the prices, okay? Which is actually bad because that can lower wages, okay? So this is often known as the what's called the Holy Trinity of macroeconomics. And let me uh, make a little uh, thing here okay, with my pen. So what are we talking about? Well, we're going to ignore that, okay? So what we're talking about is the three things. GDP, or these are the three main indicators. Okay, unemployment. Okay, uh, my screen thing is kind of acting up a little bit. Um, unemployment. Okay, kind of ran out of room there. Uh, and inflation. Okay, so if uh, do I have a way? I do have a way. If if the GDP is growing. Okay, so we see economic growth like we did from 2009 to 2019. Unemployment will fall, and we should see some inflation. Okay, prices will rise. And then conversely is true. Right now, in 2020, we're in a recession, so the GDP is falling. Unemployment is increasing, and inflation is decreasing. Now, it might not seem that way because as, as we're sitting here, we know that food prices have gone up. Okay, so that part of the uh, Prices have gone up because people are changing their spending habits, but uh, they've, they're also changing their uh, uh, moving around uh, issues. So that's been a downward pressure on, on uh, gas. So that's why we're not really seeing much inflation there. So this is known as the Holy Trinity of macro. The reason it's called that is, let's say I was worried about a high unemployment rate. Well, I'm not getting anything there. Uh, if I was worried about a high unemployment rate, I might enact a policy uh, to combat the high unemployment rate. Well, if I do that, I might cause some inflation or I might mess with, with future GDP growth. Or let's say I'm worried about GDP growth because I'm in a recession, okay? That might cause some inflation over here, okay? 
And then finally, if I'm in a situation with maybe like 10% inflation, I can fight that. Uh, but if I do, I might I might cause some action over here. Okay, so it's kind of like one of those uh, whack-a-mole machines. You take the mallet, and you, you whack one, and then you cause another problem, and you whack another, cause another problem. So that's why we've never we're never really going to get this perfectly correct. We just want to get it least bad. Okay. All right. So what we can do is well, we can make the slide bigger. Um, there we go. So this is known as the business cycle. Okay. So the technical definition of a recession is two straight quarters of negative GDP growth. Sometimes these are called downward downturns or a economic slump. What causes this? Something that decreases spending, whether it's coronavirus right now or a uh, stock market crash or a housing crisis or something else, okay, different places. That's going to cause a lack of trade, okay, and so when countries trade and uh, firms trade and households trade, that causes economic growth. So if we something disrupts that, we're going to get a recession. Okay, this is all measured by the Bureau of Economic Analysis. So if you want to know for the rest of your life uh, what that is, okay, so they're the ones that measure all this. Uh, two ways you could personally be affected by it. Well, obviously you could lose your job because we get cyclical unemployment during a recession, and uh, there may be some prices change, and you may may have a lower wage too. Okay, uh, so then the opposite of a recession is down here. This is known as prosperity. Prosperity is just two straight quarters or six six months or more of positive GDP growth. So that's going to be like technology productivity. Okay. Um, so most of the U.S. history from uh, 1940s on, we see you get a recession about once every seven or so years. Uh, not that big a deal. Mostly the U.S. economy grows um, in a pretty stable fashion, right? You can see this one was was fairly bad. There's one in the early 80s that's fairly bad. And the 70s were a little rough. Okay, um, so this is that that one right there, and then this is the one we're going through right now. Uh, you can take another country like Mexico. You can, uh, oh, look at this. I can say, okay, well, there's a recession here. Okay, I can, whoops. I can say there's a recession here. There's a recession here. There's a recession here. So this one, look at how long it is. It's like 10 years long. So that's really long, right? Uh, so different countries have different business cycles. This is Argentina. Okay, so this one's really, really bad, right? That one jumps out at you. So Argentina fails because it's very unstable. Okay, so that's what we're looking at when we look at uh, macro business cycles.